Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about settings and the settings pod in ArtRage. So here I have it open. If I close it, it appears over there on the side. And this pod I think is very mysterious to people, but the truth is it's very useful and it's not particularly complicated because I don't use about half of um, these toggles and checkboxes. So I'm going to be going over what I don't really do anything with as well as the stuff that I do things with. Just so you can see, I have my layers panel open. I want you to notice I do have my, um, I have my layer texture out. It's set to overlay, just like normal. And I have a couple of layers up, and they are set to multiply for their blend mode, right? Just, just also like in the previous videos. So having said that, I'm going to close that pod. Now the first thing to know is ArtRage comes with a whole host of presets. These presets change according to the tool I pick, right? So you can choose these presets. Each one does a different thing. What I will say is all of the presets are only, each preset's only a conglomeration of various settings. And if you know how to use your settings pod and you know what effects you'd like to achieve, you basically don't need to use the presets pod at all. <coughs> So I don't really use it. Um, it just it isn't useful enough to me, and I don't have enough screen space. The truth is, most of what goes on in the settings pod, to me, is not that complicated. Now, out of the box, ArtRage does provide you a sort of basic setup. And no matter how you change any toggles, or you check any boxes, or you blow up the universe, or whatever you do, <laughs> don't worry hit reset and you're back to your original input. That's very helpful and very useful. And this original basic setup is a perfectly nice setup. Um, sometimes I don't do anything to my settings and I just start painting and I get effects like this. Having said that, sometimes I want to achieve other effects, right? So the first, I'm just going to go over these briefly. Those things that I basically leave alone. I leave the pressure toggle alone I generally leave the color bleed toggle alone. I generally leave the paper wet toggle alone. I generally leave the insta dry toggle alone. And I generally leave the auto clean toggle alone. What does that mean? It means basically all I mess around with is loading and thinners. However, this is an instructional video. I want you to see what we're leaving alone. So if I reduce the pressure, I get a very thin line. If I increase the pressure, I get a very fat line but I have actually pressed on the screen an equal amount. All right, So that's what the pressure setting does. I just leave it at 50. Color bleed. If I get a stroke and I bring in my red and I have my color bleed, that's not going to work. I've got to do a bigger area of blue. If I have an area of blue and I want to get some red, Color bleed is going to affect how the red interacts with the blue. Basically, here I go. This is when the color bleed is very low. And what you'll see is the red begins to disappear very quickly. It does not bleed in very far to the existing paint on the canvas. And out comes this soft purple and moves along. If I rich, if I push the color bleed up, you'll find out that the red is going to push much, much farther and the strength of the red is much greater. And it does change color, but it really pushes through the existing uh, color on the canvas. That is what color bleed does. To me, I'm going to leave it at 50. It just isn't of enough value to me to be playing with, and I, I haven't found a use yet for it. You may, now that you know what it does, that may be of help to you. Paper wet, if I turn it on, just it gives me a fuzzy edge in a nutshell. I have not found that to be particularly useful, and it looks rather digital to me. So I don't use the paper wet. In, um, I'm going to wait on InstaDry because I actually do have a technique I use with it. Auto clean, if I turn it off, it doesn't clean my brush for me. What does this mean? It means when I go into this blue and I come back out, I got purple. Now that the auto clean is off, I have this nice purpley red. It's a very beautiful concept, and, and it can provide some interesting opportunities. So now, actually, this is redder than it should be because I actually tapped that 
bit of red there, and it sucked up some of the red. But that gives you a sense. The color is changing. And every time the color changes, it stays that way on my brush stroke. If I hit Auto Clean, I come in. It does change my color. I do now have purple. However, once I lift my brush from the canvas, red again. It allows me to clean my brush every time. If I don't have Instant Auto Clean clicked, and I'm painting away, and I'm like, hey, I really want that red back, but I keep on getting purple. What do I do? I go over here, and I actually have to tap this little glass of water, and it cleans my brush for me. So that's what Auto Clean does. Um, some people particularly like not having Auto Clean turned on. They like to have that messy brush effect, and it provides interesting opportunities for them to mix colors. Um, I like to have a clean brush. So I have Auto Clean turned on, and that's why I like painting digitally. It's a time saver for me. <clears throat> so what does InstaDry do? InstaDry, if I turn it on, provides me the opportunity to have every stroke be instantly dry. I do not find this a particularly convincing experience, I'll be frank. I just I haven't found a use for it. I don't think it looks much like natural media watercolors. So I don't use InstaDry for that much at all. I know that some I've I could imagine a person might think, hey, it's like I painted red on top of blue, and the blue I didn't have to make a new layer like in Lesson Three, and isn't that nice? This is a faster way to work. But the truth is, if I were to get an extra layer like I have here and set it to multiply, and then paint on top. I get a significantly different experience. In fact, this InstaDry is still on. Let's turn the InstaDry off. I get a significantly different experience. So what I get is that this red is actually translucent, and it is actually interacting with the blue below it. And they're building a new color by relating the two. If I use InstaDry on the same layer, it's almost like a Photoshop experience. They don't actually interact, but they do very barely. But it's not really convincing to me as watercolors. It's even more harsh if I um, come back to this lower layer and you know bring in a a thinner that's set very low and turn on the Insta Dry. It's there's absolutely zero relationship between the two now. You can see how dramatically it's covering it. Right? It's almost like I'm painting with oils, it's significantly um, opaque. Here, however, I have the example of the, the watercolors that I have actually done on the other layer. And I think you can see it's a pretty dramatic shift in terms of the comparison of color. So painting on separate layers is really important to me. And I think it has a great deal of value. And I would not be using the InstaDry toggle to achieve that effect. I just kind of wanted to make that clear. Um, having said that, the InstaDry does have one interesting effect that I do use on occasion, which is I paint on the same layer as the existing color. I, and I generally bring my thinners down so I get this nice, rich application of color that is consistent, rather than having that rim with some sort of you know thin um, not particularly rich color in the center. Then I'm going to hit my blender. I have hard wet blender clicked. And I come in here and I blend the exterior of this. What if God is this fantastically interesting um, experience that you can absolutely get in natural media watercolors where I load my brush with a, with a very saturated color and I get a lot of pigment in my brush and then boom, I lay it into the blue and the blue is still damp. And what happens is the new red color only really mixes on the exterior of the brush stroke. So that can be done digitally. And it's done by using the InstaDry, or at least I use it by using the InstaDry, because I can apply the color to the same layer as the existing color. And because it's on InstaDry, the red doesn't mix. But if I use the blender on the exterior of that stroke, those t that color will mix because they are on the same layer. So that actually is a very useful tool for that technique. And that, but generally speaking, I have it off. So what do I mess with? 
The loading in the thinners is basically the stuff I mess with the most. If you turn your thinners up relatively high, what you get is a kind of rim texture. This is nice and definitely something that watercolors does, right? You get this little bit of buildup. And if I actually come in and set the thinners to 100 and I push that those thinners, here let me paint with it. You can see it's applying no color, right? It's basically water. I, and then I push that into an existing area. What you'll find is you are thinning out, you are lifting color from the existing paint. And you can begin to build some interesting rim textures as well. I don't push my thinners to 100% much. Either I'm using it at this high percent and I'm getting my rim texture, I load up my chroma higher, right? If I do a rim texture but my it's fairly very thin color, it doesn't work. So I have to load up the chroma higher than normal to get a rim to build. Or I'm simply bringing it down low, just like I discussed in the last in the other video. I bring it down low, but I make my color thinner, right? I don't this does not look like watercolors to me. It's just way too rich in chroma. So I'm gonna actually come in here and I'm gonna up I'm gonna reduce the volume of red and I'm gonna reduce the thinner. And now I get an even, consistent application of color. That is useful to me and allows me to actually paint an object with a smooth application of, you know, a gloss of some color that I might have liked, just like you can really do in natural media. If I do the loading slow, just like we did in the other videos, it means my brush is not loaded. I can do very interesting dry brush effects. That's nice. If I do it higher, if I do it to 100%, my brush basically never runs out of paint. I can just doo -doo -doo -doo, paint forever, and it'll never stop. That's nice. Sometimes I set it to 100. If I have a body of area that I want to paint or something. Um, and that, in a nutshell, is the settings panel. So basically, if you leave a whole bunch of stuff alone and just play with your loading and play with your thinners, you're going to get the vast majority of effects that I think you're going to need to do watercolor work. And only in certain sort of special situations where you want to achieve a certain special effect would I be doing things with auto clean or insta dry or paper wet or color bleed. Um, and that's that. So don't be fearful of the settings pod. Open it up. In my opinion, leave your presets alone and really explore how these functions really work so that you can get interesting effects on your paper um, with your watercolor tool. I'll be talking soon about blenders as well as more on layers and how to use them, particularly for glazing effects, um, things like blend modes, and a host of other things, sticker sprays as well. So I'll be back with those videos in a while, but for now, um, have fun with the settings.